When the curtain falls and night envelops the passing day, when silence calls and burning passion lulls to sleep, when the star is fixed and reason dreams, then the heart is free and I alone with thee. Welcome to the fifth episode of our Victor Pazmore Gallery Virtual Visits. In this episode, we'll be sidestepping just a little to talk about Pazmore's poetic writings and how we can read these alongside to some of his printed images. Well, in several of his poetic writings, Pazmore questions the self, the identity of things, questions like, who am I? Or, who are you? Or, what is the image over there? or by what means can we know. These are all titles of some of his poetry. But they are also a parallel, an extension, maybe, of the same way that he seems to question his own artistic process, a lengthy investigation into the validity of his work, of his technique, and the creative act as they are con continuously modified uh, over time, while still being subjected at every turn to forces of improvisation, for example, or spontaneity and chance, and to the limits of the medium itself, which in this case would be the printed word and the image. Now, the exploration of these interlocking and globular shapes that we find quite a lot in his later works of precisely defined forms, irrational scribbles and fixed pathways of freely moving ink, as we have seen from previous episodes, well, all of these uh, elements are brought into contact with one another, and it is something that continuously preoccupied uh, Pazmore. He would often spend long spans of time um, completing an artwork, experimenting with it, abandoning it and returning to it, transforming it even and connecting it um, to other works. And we can see this play in how text and image are brought together to form one work, and how one image may be swapped for another to create a new relationship and the possibility for new meaning between the text and the image, even with the slightest alteration of the image itself, or, since we're talking about poetry, of the verse. Now, similarly, stanzas from complete poems are extracted or abstracted rather, and connected to one image or another. We find the same stanzas or verses applied to different images to compose a new work and vice versa. The possibilities for new meaning, even though there is repetition of both form and of word, well in this way the possibilities to find new meaning is quite literally endless. And all of this experimentation, playfulness and interest in what is essentially an ancient preoccupation with self and with our place in this world was injected with a new sense of mystery uh, precisely at the time when Pazmor had moved to Malta. By his own admission, what perhaps is relevant, he says, uh, to my new painting in Malta is that close and constant proximity of the ancient, mythological and the Neolithic past have reinforced my orientation from the physics of art to its biological and psychological content. This idea gives context to the several mythological references we do find in his writings and even in the choice of titles he gives um, to some of his painted and printed works. Just quoting an extract here from one of his poems, look into the pool Narcissus found, see symmetry reflected there, or will you cast your seed among the stars, or will you fall like Icarus to the ground from which you sprung? Currently you can see on your screens um, an image, a painting from the gallery itself, which is titled um, The Fall of Icarus, and this is just one of several examples um, to illustrate this connection between myth, poetry, and his painted works. 
when even in his own handwritten notes, actually, um, Pazmore describes Malta with its views of the sea um, as seen from the cliffs, as if it were itself a setting extracted from Homer's Odyssey, a poetic lure trickled out of the island, connecting it to a mysterious and remote past. And you could almost imagine Pazmore walking along that cliff's edge and wondering, in the same way he would wonder at the edge of a canvas or a new sheet of paper, asking questions at the deal with consciousness on man's relation to the world, looking across the sea to the horizon with, with hardly a soul in sight, and wondering what it means to be alone. Search the shores of an ancient land under the stars and along the sand, between the pines and cactus tree, see the stone where the lizard sleeps. What is the object over there? Well, who is the man by the orange tree? The voice is calling in the square. The light flickers out at sea. And this poem is titled, What is the object over there? Which is actually part of a series of points of contact number 17. Now, these questions um, are in themselves related to myth and the archetype. They are questions that are written all over his poetry and his visual images, examples of which uh, were even printed as limited edition books, as a collection of visual poems. And I could give you some examples here, for example, the Images of the World, published in 1975, or Burning Waters in 1988, and also the, the Man Within, a very late work, just a year before he passes away in 1997. But they are ultimately also questions posed to us. So these questions that we find riddled all across his poetry and his works are questions posed to us now, both as a reader and as a viewer. Questions to consider our place in the world and the role of art to assist us in figuring all of this out. Now, I'll leave you here to mull over that thought, which is anything but small. But in any case, I thank you for listening and I encourage you to stay tuned and keep safe.